All right, let's do this. <laughs> I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast. And today, we're going to talk about games that we play. If you haven't figured out that we're total gamer nerds by now, you should go watch more podcasts. You can find them on this channel, or over here, or over there. There's one over here. Seriously. I mean, they're kind of fun. You should check them out. And also, we're total dorks. Yeah. But... Uh, I don't know. I've come to realize seeing maybe maybe seeing nerds online that i'm not as nerdy as i thought i was i don't know maybe, <laughs> we'll work on it maybe maybe we'll, we'll, we'll workshop it with a more get you some ponies yeah with a more global perspective i realize that i'm actually not as nerdy i don't have as many facts stored in my head about x or y <laughs> series and i don't I haven't played all the games in something dork in that it's a it's, yeah it's okay I don't know. it's okay we'll work on it though Oh, but, um, yeah, Icebreaker, because Icebreaker. Um, what is the favorite game you played in the last year? So, my favorite game played in the last year, but I don't remember if it was, it was released, I think, in 2012, but, um, is Borderlands 2. Uh, I started playing it before I got my own Xbox, I was playing it on my roommate's. And then, but I played it so that in the second year of headshots, I wouldn't look like an idiot on camera by trying to talk about what was going on in the game, having never played the game myself. So I fixed that problem by, <laughs> by playing it. And then after I, I didn't get all the way through it before headshots finished, but, um, I played it out uh, afterwards and I find now that it is the game that I benchmark all the other games that I play against. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the most perfect game. Um, I don't know what is. But I don't have an answer for that. But uh, I got a lot of time put into that game. You know, 60, 80 hours of game play. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a really good gamer, so I do fall victim to a lot of traps and stupid strategies. But... I put a lot of time into that game, uh, invested a lot in all the side missions, uh, the story was great, animation was great, I found the difficulty level to be fairly appropriate, uh, and, and it was a compelling game too, like it was gun porn, but it was a gun porn with a good story behind it, and uh, so I just really enjoyed that. Now when I play other games, I typically will measure it in hmm. some way again. So for example, when I got uh, my 360 for Christmas... Um, my, uh, Sarah's, my girlfriend's brother bought me, um, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, and he's like, this is a great game. And it was rated game of the year last year. And I, I played it and it was, it was a fantastic game. It was, uh, well, the story was great. The mechanics were great. Um, I found the, the animation to be beautiful. The only the only complaint I had was it was perhaps a little short because Borderlands was so long <laughs> by comparison. Like, yeah, Borderlands Two was really long. It was a really long. I every time I thought we were getting close to killing Jack, no, there was more game to oh, be yeah. played. So, um, so I would say that is probably my favorite game I've played in the last year. Hmm. What about you, Jim? Uh, I have played a lot of games in a. I play a lot of games in a year. I mean, I've been playing Fear. I've been playing Feed the Beast. I have been playing. I play. I beat Tomb Raider. I finished Dark Siders, and I started playing Dark Siders too. Uh, I clocked. By the time this podcast comes out, I do not know how many hours I will have clocked in Skyrim, but I will tell you it has been a lot, and I have a lot of mods <laughs> um, that just add hours to that game in a way that is really fun. But. Skyrim is close, but Skyrim isn't fun because it's fun. Skyrim is fun because I make it fun. Like, I have to have an internal narrative mm -hmm. in order to enjoy it. If I don't have a story that I'm telling about this world, it's just boring. Um, but a game that told me a really good story was Far Cry 3. Okay. Which I finally got and played in uh, like early 2013. Late 2013. Because, especially to contrast it with the new Tomb Raider that came out. It's Far Cry 3 in Tomb Raider... You are Lara Croft, like scared, vulnerable Lara Croft. And I will tell you that it's a super fun game. I loved it. It's gruesome in some spots. And for me to think that it's gruesome, it's got to be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But scared Lara Croft gets old after I've shot like 300 guys in the face. Yeah. Like the notion that she is still frightened when, when, when coming under enemy fire is is sort of ridiculous like at this point 
I have killed more people than any hardened combat veteran in the world. Like, that is insane. Um, whereas in Far Cry 3, you embrace that transition. In the first part of the game, the good part of the game, you, you, you know, your, your friends are kidnapped, and you have to rescue them, and you have to steal yourself and become part of the jungle to rescue them. And you, you can see yourself and your attitudes changing. And you can see it in your friends' reactions to you. When, they, when, you finally, uh, when I finally rescued my girlfriend, and, and she's, a, she's an actress or, or she's a producer or something like that. It's, it's, it's been a, a, like it was early 2013, so it's been a while. But she, she says, yeah, now we can, I can get you that studio job and we can just go home and forget all about this. I'm like, I shot three men through the heart today. From 50 yards. I I got my brother's girlfriend to drive a jeep away from a burning temple while I fended off other jeeps with a grenade launcher. I, I am fundamentally not the same person that you left. I cannot leave this place because it is me. Mm. And that... The fact that the game just embraced that and just reacted to that. So, I mean, I mean, because usually in games like Borderlands or Bulletstorm or, or Tomb Raider, you just kill people and you don't think about it. And in, in, in Far Cry 3, you still don't think about it because it's basically a bow hunting simulator that lets you hunt people. Mm. Which is, as weird as that sounds, is really fun. Um, also, tigers. Oh my god, tigers. But... It's it. I like how it reacts to it, and it, and it shows that that killing people has changed you. Um, and but that unfortunately is only the first half of the game. And then I got sexually assaulted by a shaman lady and caught up in a drama with her and her brother that I did not care about at all. Mm. And now I'm at this point where I cannot wait to get off this island just so I can get away from all the people who live here <laughs> or murder them. <laughs> I seriously, my Far Cry Three character is like the Beethoven of murder. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that analogy before. He's really good at it, and he's entirely deaf to screams of mercy. Alright, I see the, <laughs> I see the connection. I mean, every time somebody's like, somebody's like, oh, what are we going to do about this threat? I'm like, it's cool, I'll go kill them. They're like, you can't just go kill them. I got this. Though. It's cool, guys. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, yeah, but that is that is probably, as weird as it sounds, my favorite game. Only because I played Spec Ops and Thomas was alone in 2012 and those were definitely in my top five favorite games they were so good feed the beast oh my god so addicted but yeah definitely far cry 3 weirdly i didn't think that would that would come out on top um so what are you playing now so right now um i had started a second playthrough of borderlands 2 playing what uh, what class, what class? Oh, uh, so the first time I played through is uh, uh, El Salvador, the gun... Sorry. The gun zerker. Yeah. Is it, yeah, so, well, it was just Salvador, Salvador not El not Salvador. Not El Salvador. That's a Sal country. Yeah, Salvador, the guns, uh, gun zerker. Mostly because I'm fairly <laughs> middle-of-the-road mediocre at games. So in terms of a lot of finesse and combat strategy, I don't have that. But I'm really good at running in and being a meat shield. <laughs> uh, my roommate and I used to play a lot of the... Uh, the Arkham uh, Lego games I guess we're, I'm going to talk about Arkham in a second we, we, we played a lot of the Lego games and it would be late at night or or Marvel Marvel Alliance yeah um, and so I'd be sitting there playing late at night and I'd fall asleep and my character would be running across the screen and then just like in the corner and he'd be like <laughs> dude dude and I'd be like, oh, just fighting, right? <laughs> I was really really bad like he he I would just fall asleep randomly playing games and t just die. Castle Crashes was another one I was really oh. bad for at that. He he would rack up so many kill counts just like he was better at it than me, but just because I would fall asleep and so he'd take care of This is why you can't play for headshots. You just fall asleep. <laughs> no. Well, can't have that. Oddly enough, though, now I'm playing through as um, Zero. Nice. So it's all headshots for me because uh, I... I Oddly enough, played Salvador with a sniper rifle. For some reason, I did a, I did a lot of long distance sniping and then finished up close if I had to. So, really weird for a gun zerker. Um, no spray and pray when you're doing it with a yeah. with a sniper. So now I'm playing. Uh, I I started with a sniper, but anyway. So I started playing that, and then sadly Harold Ramis died. So I felt nostalgic and I picked up the Ghostbusters game for Xbox. 
And then my friend lent me Arkham City because I enjoyed how I enjoyed Arkham Asylum, the Batman game, so much. So that's what I'm playing now. And it's I'm just enjoying the hell out of that game. I enjoyed Arkham Asylum, but again, it suffered from uh, what I perceived to be a fairly short, like it was a medium length game. It wasn't a super short game, but it was no Borderlands in terms yeah. of this. So I felt that the game was amazing, but you leveled up almost too quickly, or you capped out Batman's abilities too quickly, and then the, the game resolved itself with your final confrontation against the Joker. Um, but I loved everything about the game. So, uh, and then Arkham City was released, and it was released to a really like critical acclaim. Oh, yeah. And, but, I, at the time I didn't have my own Xbox, but also I like waiting for the games to come down, so when they're released as the Platinum series or whatever, and I'll pick them up, or I'll buy them uh, used. So, I f- a friend lent me Arkham City, and I've been, I've been logging, whatever time I do sit down, because I usually only get game time on the weekends, uh, whatever time I do sit down and play it, it's, it's just amazing. I like the fact that, Unlike Arkham Asylum, you don't start off with nothing. In this game, you almost start off with every single piece of hardware and whatnot and moves that you had in the the first game. Mm -hmm. You have to pick up a lot of, like, some of your equipment as you go along, but all of your takedown moves and stuff are already uh, pre-awarded to you at the beginning of the game. Um, Because obviously, with the the storyline, you go in as Bruce Wayne, then you call in your bat suit. So yes, you don't have all of your equipment available. So there is that level of it, but... Um, there's a lot more leveling up, or at least a lot more uh, character de- or, um, ability development, skill tree mm-hmm. development. Um, I enjoy that it's now an open map. It's no longer oh, it, it's no longer a completely. I uh, feel bad. In what way? It, so when I when I played Arkham City, um, I I love it. Like we did a video on that uh, months months ago. Months ago, Ryan, other Ryan, and I did a video on that. We talked about. Uh, tabletop concepts in there and one of the one of the things we love about it is that even right from the beginning you feel like batman yeah you don't feel like you're 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 this person that's going to later be batman you're batman right now yeah you know 10 guys you're like well unfortunately you should have brought more guys <laughs> but I, I i started feeling bad about midway through the game when i realized that arkham city is essentially a jail yeah so these criminals are in jail mm-hmm. and i as Batman, swoop into what is essentially their jail cell and beat them up. Mm-hmm. They aren't. They aren't committing crimes. They're not doing anything wrong. Well, some of them are. I mean, I find guys doing push-ups. I swoop down. I'm like, "Hey, you look like you're exercising. I'll exercise you." But that's only because they attack you. Because there are people uh, when you go into the really rundown sections of it. Yeah, there, like the political are, prisoners and. No, I'm just talking about like the homeless people. There are. Well, I don't know. Maybe those are political prisoners that then congregate in this area when you leave. But I found an area. It was like a slum mm. city, and these people had absolutely no interaction with you. They were just there, yes. just minding their own business. So they they weren't allied with the Joker or Penguin or Two Face or any of the other factions that are going on in this city. So, but, I mean, there are some... Well, certainly, but, but I feel like I feel like it is an understandable... As a criminal in Gotham, it is an understandable reaction to, upon seeing Batman, to pick up a pipe and attempt to brain him. See, I would, I would take the other stance of, <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Don't no, 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 alone, but, but, it, but if you're a big, burly dude... And you're you know you're hanging out in, in 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 the Arkham Street and you're doing whatever. I mean maybe you're just hanging out with your pipe, or your knife, or your taser, or your assault rifle, or you're just doing push-ups or playing basketball or you know kicking a kicking a soccer ball around. Like you're, and then Batman swoops in. Like Batman is already in ass whooping mode. Yeah. Batman's st- like his default setting is whoop your ass. So, I mean, at that point, they are... I, I consider them to be acting in self-defense from me. Especially since they're aware that Batman has been swooping around the city, beating up random groups of criminals, because they were vaguely in the way of something that I wanted. Yeah, I would only feel bad for or them. Or it was hilarious. I, or I should say, I only feel bad for them when you catch snippets of their conversations and you realize that they're only doing... 
Like they're only wanting to attack you because Joker, whoever is going to hurt them or yeah. hurt their family. He's like, I've got, we've got bomb colors on. This is crazy. Let's yeah. get them. And I'm like, oh, sorry guys. Yeah. But to, uh, unlike Far Cry 3, Batman hasn't killed anybody. If you notice, whenever you defeat enemies and you turn on your detective mode, they're all unconscious. I know, I know. But at the same time... They might as well be dead. I'm pretty sure I kicked a guy off a building once. Wow. I'm pretty sure I drop kicked him into the bay. Wow. Well, you can swim. I'm just like... I'm not convinced is all I'm saying. Okay, I so mean, maybe there's some questionable stuff. But anyways, to get back to the point, I love the fact that... The, the, it's an open concept. Uh, I mean, there's still a linear story that you have to follow, but it's a lot easier to go off on side missions and swoop around because they have all of these side quests like uh, tracking Zaz through the, the tele network, like finding the, the Riddler trophies, which are 10 times, 100 times oh. more of them now than there were in, in, uh, in Arkham Asylum. Um, hunting down Deadshot. Uh, teaming up with Bane for the the Titan chemicals. Oh yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, just the augmented. The Mad Hatter stuff. I and... haven't reached that part of it. Oh, yet, but... I, I found it. We found it in the video. I'd never done it before, but Ryan okay. had. Um, the thing, actually, the thing I really like about the the Riddler stuff in in Arkham City was that there were hostages at stake. Mm-hmm. Like you could see, you could see because in in Arkham Asylum. I saw my first Riddler trophy, and I got the Riddler on my comic, and he's like, ha ha ha, Batman, I bet you can't solve my riddle and get my trophy. And I'm like, riddle me this, why should I care? Yeah. Next. Whereas now... He's, he's like, where are you going? Yeah, he solve only re- he only reveals all these hostages when you've collected When you solve a bunch of, of riddles, and then yeah. he's like, now I'll release the, now I'll reveal the hostages, solve that. Yeah. Uh, God damn, now I gotta go and do a thing. Yeah. So I... I I really enjoyed that. There's more weapons upgrades and it's more creative. You have more opportunities to to figure out different ways of taking villains down. Like for example, I just finished the freeze uh, fight where you fight freeze um, after you give him the stuff from Ra's al Ghul to, to yep. synthesize a cure. And I like the fact that they've built it so that the AI won't allow you to use the same takedown on him more than once. Hmm. Once you take it down, he'll protect himself against yeah, those things. Yeah, he'll, he'll adapt. Learns. So I enjoyed that side of it. Especially because once you analyzed his suit, it gives you some 16 different opportunities, that, like 16 different weaknesses in his armor that mm-hmm. allows you to exploit it to beat him. And so, I mean, if you goof up on one of them, then you can't use it again. So, for example, I inadvertently shut down his his freeze gun because i figured oh that was one gonna be one of the things i do and then i analyzed the suit and realized that if i do it once he's gonna just modulate his his weapon so it won't be uh vulnerable to that attack anymore huh so i i enjoyed that side or at least that flourish of the game uh and you're it's right it's with kevin conroy being batman's voice you just feel oh. like you're walking around as batman every time a batman movie comes out uh, somewhere on my Facebook appears a thread. It's a poll that someone put up. And it says, who is the real Batman? It has Adam West and Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer and George Clooney and Christian Bale. And I always type the same thing. Kevin Conroy is the real Batman. You know who actually isn't bad from what I've heard the limited stuff is Diedrich, um, oh, what's his last name? He, he... But he was in um, the Drew Carey show as one of the friends. Uh, he hmm. or he was he played uh, Jethro in the Beverly Hills Billy's movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Anyways, that guy you're in, well, I think Batman. IMDb link down below. Yeah, in Batman: Brave and the Bold, he he plays Batman in that one. Oh, okay. And then Will Arnett in the Lego Movie, I hear, is really good as Batman. Yes. So I mean, there are. I, I, yeah, I mean, there are other 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 people can. Well, and, and Kevin Conroy, I know Mark Hamill is not. I don't think reprising reprising his role as the Joker anymore. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Conroy has been being Batman for like twenty years. Yeah, yeah, he really is the definitive voice of Batman. I mean, yeah. I guess the the definitive portrayal because once you got out of the goofy sixties or so with um, with Adam West and you got into say Neil Adams. And then you got a little bit of a dark turn with Frank Miller in the comics. But yeah. Batman went from being kind of goofy and campy to a lot more detective to super dark and brooding with the you know bronze era of comics. But 
he's thankfully been rescued from that and is a little bit more of the badass detective but Kevin Conroy's portrayal all the way through has oh, just yeah. been this definitive look at Batman well and he's, he's, he's strong he's fatherly he's different from Bruce Wayne he's not angry all the time like he's but he can be intimidating but yeah but he can still be intimidating <laughs> he doesn't have a he doesn't have a horrible throat infection that needs to be looked at. Um, no, it's it's and it's. I will admit that it's a lot easier to to. I I don't want to sort so, so to qualify that. I don't know that it's a lot easier to just voice a role rather than to play a role in the way that a traditional actor does. But it seems less involved. I mean, I know like it's. I feel every time I make fun of Christian Bale's Bat voice, I I feel a little bad because I know that. From accounts, he is he is a person who takes his craft really seriously. Yeah, and that that bat voice is the result of like hours and hours of painstaking effort, mm-hmm. and and he worked really hard on it. And so I feel slightly bad that I am making fun of a thing that he worked really hard on. In the same way that I would feel bad if Christian Bale made fun of something that I had made, mm. but it is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the dissenting voice not that i liked it but i you're on the dissenting voice i certainly appreciate what he what i think he was trying to do because i mean when you think about superman it's it almost seems like there's no effort to hide who he is i mean his super hypnosis also glasses i know my well my favorite was um frank quigley and uh, grant morrison when they discussed how who are you yeah yeah uh with the podcast when they would um draw the superman they would try to like change his body shape so that Mm -hmm. you know he would hunch over and he would look less heroic but when it i without modulating the voice electronically i could see why bruce wayne in the movies would choose to go completely gruff to mask who he is to to completely divorce himself from bruce wayne you just do a clint eastwood impression the whole time i guess you could do that it makes more sense to talk like this oh my god that's ridiculous. because then nobody's gonna understand you no no one's gonna understand you at all that's the problem like but it doesn't matter what did you say did you say put down my guns or shoot you i don't remember this is the problem that people in arkham city don't have is they don't get to claim that because kevin conroy is perfectly clear but in lieu of this becoming our batman episode i'm batman swear to me Ryan is Batman. Ryan Batman. See, I wanted to be a voice actor as a kid. I you're, would have had you're, fun. You're doing a good job. We're doing, totally. We're, yeah. No, we're gonna get you to do some Batman later. That's uh, gonna be fun. Not well, later right. tonight, but um, no, I have been clocking tons and tons of hours. You want to talk about an open world game? <laughs> I have been ta- clocking tons and tons of hours in Skyrim. I just, I rediscovered it like a couple weeks ago, and I'd been puttering around in it, and I established this internal narrative. Without an internal narrative, it just, it's the whole game is worthless to me. I can't, because there's so many things I could do, I can't decide what I want to do, <laughs> and there's so many places to go, and I didn't really, under, when I start, it's really hard to get in, because I don't understand the game very well, in terms of what skills are good, and what skills are not, and, and now that I've, I've you know, clocked, I don't know how many hours in it, um, I, I understand that every combat style is viable, and that, like, there's a, there's a lot of interesting trade-offs. But I had to I had to come up with a story, mm. and so I came up. Well, my first character was a a dual wielding cell sword who didn't care about anyone, and then eventually settled down with his shopkeeper wife. And my new my new character is an honorable Nord Smith who is occasionally called upon to be a warrior, and now now he's found himself as this the the captain of this war band that I've assembled using some mods, and. Like he's he's married to a to a, a Nord warrior and they have an adopted daughter that they leave alone for far longer than his healthy as parents. They're really bad parents, <laughs> and it's something that he's gonna need to make some decisions about later tonight when I'm playing. But and I already have my character like my next character planned out for who I want them to be and what that what I want them to do because there's so much I haven't I haven't even finished the main quest. Do you start uh, like do you restart the game or do you just pick I, a new character? I just restart the like you restart the game. I even have a mod that lets me have alternate starts, so I don't have to do the beginning in the same way every time. Okay. That's the other thing is the modding community. I I use over a hundred Skyrim mods. I mean everything from stuff that improves the graphics to stuff that improves the follower system, improves the AI, improves improves the enemies, uh, adds entire new functions to the game. Uh, one of my favorite mods because it forces me to slow down is Frostfall, which 
makes it so you can freeze to death. Like, because Skyrim is, is it's, it's cold. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the north. It's the icy north. Mm-hmm. And so, in, in, with Frostfall, you have to protect yourself from the cold. And, you know, you, you, you can die from exposure. So, if you spend, you know, a week and a half wandering in the freezing wilderness, you'd better bring a lot of firewood. Yeah. And you'd better bring a tent. And you'd better be wrapped up tight. Like, my, my Nord wears heavy armor, and he's got a big burly cloak, and he's always got his helmet on to keep mm-hmm. his face covered. And, you know, I'm always carrying my torch or, I, or, or you know, I've got extra frost resistance gear so that I'm, I'm not, you know, just totally uh, freezing my ass off. And I still have, like, I have come really close to freezing to death. Um, happily, it doesn't affect all my followers, but I wish it did, sort of, because, I mean, it would be unfortunate to have them just drop dead half the time. But it would be interesting. But, I, I mean, I have them wearing cloaks, too, and, and that kind of thing. But, yeah, just with that narrative, it's so fun. And like I said, I haven't I haven't finished one major quest line. Not one. I haven't finished the main quest. I haven't resolved the Civil War, partly because I accidentally bugged it out by uh, preemptively terminating a fort full of jerks, it turns out. Um, I haven't... I'm almost done the Warriors Guild quests, and I'm excited for that. Um, but I like I, I just I'm just doing things. I bought a house, um, and I and I remodeled my house. I built a house, and I got I got to understand the difference because my, when my sellsword built his house, uh, I got my steward to just furnish it. I was like, I don't care what you put there, just whatever. Mm-hmm. But I have been. I mean, my Nord, he's a, he's a smith. He wants to build things with his own two hands. So I've been building stuff out of boards and nails. And I took a whole, like, three hours off one day, and I just played townsfolk. I just had all my smithing stuff together, and I took off all my armor. I left it at home. My wife was there. My kid was there. And, and I I wandered around, and I, I made, like, I did blacksmithing stuff. Like, I'm still leveling skills and, and that. But I didn't have any weapons, mm-hmm. and I don't have any offensive spells. And there are random vampire and dragon attacks. So if I fight one, I have to run indoors and hide or die. I'm surprised that you didn't say Minecraft was your favorite game, given how much like construction have, you're doing in this game. I have clocked a lot of hours in Minecraft, and I love Minecraft. But the thing with Minecraft is Minecraft is always me building a thing. Mm. It's always and, and, and it's always me building a thing alone. Even, even on our server... We we tend to because of the way that feed the beast like we just use tons and tons of resources we tend to spread out. Mm. Like our first our first act on the server is to like build a small co op so people starting can survive. Our second act is to light off in random directions, to all po- like to points unknown and to find a spot where that looks like a, like watch the beginning of Minecraft videos. Yeah. Find a spot that looks like a cool place to build a house. Build a house there. Done. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, this, there's a whole world that reacts to me. And it doesn't just want to murder me. Sometimes it wants to make friends with me. Sometimes it wants me to get people to steal other people's stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it wants me to cast spells and save things and fight dragons. And that is something that... Well, there's one dragon I can fight in Minecraft. But that is not something I get to do as much in Minecraft. I don't get to feel the world. I just get to build things. Okay. And... It's different, but it's yeah, it's it's not it's not my favorite, and it's certainly not the thing that is occupying me right now. Minecraft is, I think, is also it's, for me. It's less about building and more about designing. Okay. Like I rather than if you've seen the videos, um, if you haven't, you can watch our my Minecraft videos right there. There aren't very many of them yet, but they're going to be more. Um, but the buildings are hideous. The the things inside them, the designs, the manufacturing. That's the thing that I like. <laughs> but. The buildings are hideous. An architect you are not. Huh? No, no, I'm really not. I'm trying to learn. That's why I'm making videos. Um, but I think that's where we should leave it for today. We're playing lots of games. We're definitely going to do some more or some more like this maybe next season. Yeah, maybe. It's uh, certainly nice. But we were running break, late. Break from the serious stuff. Yeah. So. And uh, as always, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. I thought you were Batman. I'm Batman. Stay awesome. Stay awesome.